He's uh, the di director of the Finnish Foundation for Cultural Policy Research and also the senior researcher at the City, Hels City of Helsinki Urban Facts. And he will be commenting on uh, all the presentations that we have had in this second session. Yes, so we have heard three, actually four, very good, very informative speeches on immigration and integration in Europe. And actually, it's quite difficult for me to give comments because I have so very little to criticize. Uh, how much time I do have? 15 minutes. Uh, um, yes, I indeed, it's very, very good speeches. And that's indeed what we also need in Europe is a po possibility to exchange ideas, get experiences from diverse, different countries and, and to, to go on also on, on detail on what is taking place in, in different places, what is taking place at the moment, what might be taking place in the near future and what we should think about all, all that. Right. Um, I'll focus on the concept of integration that all of you uh, touched upon um, at least at, at some parts uh, on some parts of your, your speeches we are now in the middle of a, a refugee I also agree with Lisa that calling this a crisis is a bit too, 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 too much a, 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 an asylum challenge in, in, in Europe and very much of the contemporary debate is, is focusing on, on refugees and asylum seekers. But when we are talking about integration, I think the first thing to remember is that, that integration is not something that concerns asylum seekers and refugees. It is something that concerns everybody that moves from one country to another country to settle there down more or less permanently. Also those who might for in the first instance come as, as labor migrants. After all, it might happen that the place where they are working in the, in the, uh, their, their first place where they work is not the best possible where they integrate to the society because, for example, they might do all the communication in, in English in, in Sweden or Germany or, or, or Finland and therefore they wouldn't learn the language and so on. And also we have to remember that, that the large bulk of all migration is actually family migration and the spouses and children, they also, in a, in a way they have to, to, to found their, find their place in the society. And, and so, so this is that we should not forget at the moment that, that also now mi migration to Europe is much more than, than only asylum seeking. Uh, then, um, well, immigrants should find their place in the society. That's actually the definition I give, I translate it as, as such in, in, in Finnish. It is a, a process where somebody finds his or her place in the society where he or she is, is living. And of course, this is a kind of a challenge to anybody who, who um, moves to live in another country. But that's also some kind of a... Um, um, too narrow understanding of the question. I think we get fruitful ideas by, by uh, taking a more broad, broader look at it and thinking that, that everybody who lives in a society has to find his or her place in that society. And we or all we who are working with youth or have children and have seen their uh, uh, growing up, we know how difficult these societies are actually to find your place in, to integrate. It's, this is not only a, a, a problem in a way or a challenge for immigrants, it's a, it's a question that uh, is relevant for, for everybody. And it's not at all always so that immigrants should have somehow a very uh, dif difficult, different kinds of, let's say, problems or challenges than, than anybody else. So it's a question that is relevant to everybody. And then there's a third level, it's a societal integration, that, that the societies should learn 
their own identities anew, to cope with the more diverse realities and also the more mobile realities that it is the Finland of today is definitely not the Finland of 1980s and the 1950s and it's the same of, of Germany, same of, of, of Sweden and it's very interesting in, that in Germany you still have to go on discussing whether Germany is an Einwanderungsland or, or not because it's, it's already 50 years ago that it has been as, as as such. And, and in, in, indeed, also Finland, also Sweden, I think Sweden is the most best proceeded country in, in Europe in the sense in that way of redefining itself. Then the second point about uh, when we're talking about immigrant integration we are mainly talking politicians are talking the media is talking about finding your place in the at the labor market and of course it's very very important it's very uh, influential for the let's say economic uh, impact of, of migration, that how well those who, who come, how well they find a, a job and, and, and start uh, having an income and paying taxes and, and, and so on. But it's also very, something very narrow, that, that integration is much more than only finding a job. It's also a question of socio psychological well-being, of feeling secure in the place where you are living locally and, and nationally. It's about social networks that, that uh, should be, let's say, larger, that should exceed the, the <coughs> borders of your own ethnic or cultural community. It's about cultural integration, about learning the language, knowing the values, sometimes accepting, sometimes uh, disagreeing with those values, uh, understanding the more bro general um, cultural landscape in the country you're living in. It's about political integration, about understanding the nemo democratic values of the society, participating in political decision making at least by, by, by voting, and so on. So, so integration is also much much broader in this sense. And it's very important to remember this because we know, it has already been said, for many of those who have come, it will take years before they get that job. And it's very important for them to be integrated and to integrate to Finland, Sweden and Germany in the, all those other ways that they can integrate and will integrate because also those who have job can be quite badly integrated and also those who don't have a job can be very well integrated. So, so making the final judgment about whether integration and integration policy is succeeded or not should not focus on, on labor market situation only. Then I'll only very briefly mention that the second generation in Finland is very important. It's the crucial text for our integration policy of which Germany and Sweden already has lots of uh, experience that we actually have very, very little. But how Finland will look like in the future in terms of this growing diversity, it's very much a question how those people who are born here, but who have parents who are born abroad, how they find their place in this, this society. It's then very much a question of equality, uh, identity, about uh, um, equity also in, in, in a broader, broader sense. Finally, integration is a long-term process. We need to have patience. It's not something that takes place in, in a couple of days or weeks or even months. It's a, question, it's a cultural change that takes place at an individual level, community level, societal level, and cultural changes always take time. It's a question of integration policy, but we also have to remember that, that politics in today's world is, is has its limits. I, th I believe, a little bit cynically maybe, that the, labor, the great labor market integrator is actually economic growth. And it's something that integration policy actually cannot affect that, that, that much. If we get more that kind of a jobs that uh, have a kind of a low threshold, that those who are newcomers can easily enter and, and get a job, that is also helps the labor market uh, integration uh, a lot. And 
local level is important. That is, the, we have been focusing also, we as, as researchers, we have been focusing too long, too much on the national level. We should know much more how, what are the good practices at the local level of integration. And, and finally, um, a question of, Euro, uh, of Germany being a country of immigration, Sweden being a country of immigration, Finland being a country of immigration. That's also all very important debates. But what we still are lacking even more crucially, uh, more seriously today, is a question of Europe as a continent of immigration. That somehow it seems that the whole Europe is has missed the point to start discussing that indeed this continent is changing. This is a part of a global mobile world, which means that, that uh, you cannot simply close the borders and think that we are living on an island. Thank you. Thank you, Pasi. So unfortunately, time is running by really fast. So what I propose we do is um, take three questions and then uh, continue um, a discussion about this topic with a cocktail in hand. So, um, but we can start with uh, Mr. Stetter had a question and then uh, two more after that. Thank, thank you for, for giving me again the floor. Uh, I would just like to say I was more than happy that uh, Lisa put this so positively in a way. But nevertheless, and this is the question or the comment, uh, we should be aware that we will have a problem with populists and we will have also a problem with racist people. If you are saying 78% uh, or so of the, of the right-wing parties, well, this is perhaps the peak. Nevertheless, you can have a situation like in France where it's most probable eventually that the next president comes from Front National. And this will change a lot in the whole circumstances we are, we are talking about. And I think in that way also, Gero, I think uh, within our party, the SPD, I'm also a member there, like you. Uh, perhaps currently the debate is not an open one, but it's, it's burning, it's, 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 it's cooking, and it can come up very, very quickly also within the SPD that there is a, a, a kind of a eruption coming up, as it was this weekend uh, in, the, in the CSU party. So we have to be careful on, on this issue. But my, my point is, there is the danger of populist parties which are changing the whole thing, even if you are saying, as, as you are saying, uh, Europe, if you have 500 million population and 5 million are coming, this is 1% of the whole population. So the figures are not very high, but the problem can become very, very important. Thank you. My question is about the um, relationship uh, between austerity politics and immigration. So, uh, austerity politics have, has failed to give us growth. So, can we have, uh, you know, success in, in uh, sorry, uh, in integration? Uh, with austerity politics and without growth. One more? Anybody? <clears throat> um, here's one, there's another one. Thank you for the interesting presentations. I was wondering about the concept of integration. If we think of the countries or continents of immigration, uh, like Australia or Canada, US, in those places you actually see clear distinctions between the communities, so the, the Indians and the, in the Koreans and the, and the Italians all have kept a lot of their identity. So, so what is it actually that we want the people to integrate to when they come to Finland or to, to Nordic countries or to Europe? Okay, who wants to respond or should we just uh, have a round? Everybody can comment. Um, who wants to? You can start. I uh, use the the one, um, the handheld. This one. this one is it working? Yes. No. Uh, uh, no. Thank you. Thank you very much for this reminder that xenophobia is a very real threat 
in, in, in my mind, I think as social democrats, the only way we can meet this is to frame the issue of immigration as an issue of redistribution. And you know, that's, that's our best sport. No one is better at redistribution than, than we are. And it's because it's so clearly a, an issue where you need to redistribute, redistribute from long-term gains to short-term costs, and where you need to redistribute uh, these long-term diffuse uh, gains to very real costs that are not evenly carried. They are carried by people who are, are in sectors of the labor market where they already have low wages, bad conditions. They are carried by people that already live in neighborhoods where they don't feel safe. They are carried by parents who already have their kids in school where they worry about the school results. So we need a very strong redistribution politics here. And of course, it's really difficult to combine this with austerity because precisely these kinds of investments that you need to do in better schools, in better housing, in, 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 in investment, in growth, you can't do because of austerity. Now that the talk is about um, uh, refugee Keynesianism, you know, I don't care what kind of Keynesianism, but I do think we need some more Keynesianism in, in this continent. You know, we need to do more investments and what the forecast in Sweden now is that the growth in the coming years will be much higher than the forecast was before this large inflow of asylum seekers. Why? Because suddenly the state will have to invest, they will have to build houses, they will have to open up new classrooms, they will have to employ new teachers, they will have to employ a lot of people in social services, and this will actually boost consumption, and boosting consumption means boosting growth. So, you do, so do in the short-term perspective, at least, it looks fine. It's easy to say from the Swedish perspective because we can afford to borrow money. Some other European states cannot afford to borrow money to do this boosting exercise. But you know, if you can, and if you're able to frame immigration as, as an investment that you need to optimize and not a cost you need to minimize, I think you are on the way of, of, of framing it in a social democratic way that can also win over some of the people that vote for the populist parties because they are worried about the redistribution, they're worried about living in unsafe neighborhoods, they're worried about the condition at school, they're worried about the condition at the labor market. And our answer to this has to be, there is a way of meeting this while keeping uh, um, an open Europe. Yeah, thank you. Um, in Germany, you, you have an uh, independent economic uh, advisory council, yeah? And they quite recently said there's absolutely no problem to finance uh, the, the wave of refugees yeah, concerning Germany. I think we already see it in France yeah, that the Commission said, of course, we have to take this into, into account. Uh, often I also ask myself, what, what does it mean, austerity? Did we, has there been austerity in Germany in the same extent as in Greece or in Spain? Honestly, no, never, yeah, of course. We had this famous Agenda 2010 and we had a lot of social uh, side effects, of course, yeah. I don't want to minimize it, but never ever to this extent uh, uh, as in, 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 in Greece and in, uh, in Spain. So I would be cautious to, to use it too, in a too inflation, inflationary way, yeah, the, the, the austerity. Uh, integration, oh, absolutely right, yeah. On the other hand, I think if we don't take into account the, that's what I meant with a digestion capacity of, of a society. So it goes step by step, yeah. And uh, I, I, I totally agree, Optimistic, optimism is always good. But I would opt for an uh, uh, optimistic realism, maybe, yeah. No, to, to take into account the difficulties, yeah. I mean, also from a social democratic point of view, if, if, we, if we are in a way too optimistic, yeah, don't looking into the detail, don't want to see the problems, yeah. Do you really then think we, we end up in government then uh, having the possibility to, yeah, to influence politics? I, I don't think so, yeah. So I don't, we don't have to go as far maybe as, as, as our Danish colleagues, yeah, 
So very, very skeptic. Yeah. So you know, we had a debate with the European Minister Michael Road last week, and a, a couple of uh, MPs from from the you know, so, uh, Social Democrats. They were very, very skeptic. Yeah. But maybe we find the the the, the middle way. And I think also what you said. We need a new concept of, of integration and a vision of a different society. It can, the old kind of Nordic model, the old kind of image of Finnish society, of German society, that has come to an end. Thank you. And Patti? Yes, uh, only brief comments. I'm, I'm politically neutral my, myself, so I can... Um, think freely about, about uh, what will take place in, in the political landscape. I, I also find it quite possible that there, there will be a kind of a, a populist neo-nationalist takeover in, in European politics. Um, it, is, it has taken place in some places already and it's definitely not impossible that it will take place in, to such an extent that it will um, have an influence on the, the EU policy, policies as well. But the point is that if that happens, will that kind of a national EU, member state national policies and EU policies be a, in a way able to border the, uh, close the borders? No, it won't. Will it be able to, to produce a new, those, that kind of a nostalgic, nationalistic, homogeneous, national societies, no. So, so they, they will most probably quite badly uh, miss their ideals. And, and what will happen then? That, that's the, the question that is, is, is puzzling me. About the concept of integration, I suppose that Finland is one of the very few countries I know where uh, integration has been defined in the law. I think in, in, Euro, in Sweden there is no such a definition, nor, nor in, in Germany, but if I remember now it, uh, correctly by heart in English, integration means uh, a mutual process between the, the immigrant and the Finnish society where the newcomer uh, starts participating in the Finnish society, especially in the labor market, while at the same time maintaining his or her language and culture. It, is, it becomes very close to the Swedish one, and it was copied a little bit from there in, in the 1990s. <laughs> Uh, but the point is, is, is that, that that was already also said by, by Gerard, that what does it really mean to be integrated in a society? What kind of a society is, is Finland that, that you are supposed to, to, to integrate to? And then there is a big question in Finland, what do these linguistic and cultural rights of, of immigrants really mean in, in practice? That's a question that is still very much undebated in, in, in Finland. And about the austerity things, yes, Finland has been a little bit unlucky in the sense that the two times that we have had a, a higher peak in, in immigration in the early 1990s and then now it has <coughs> taken place at the same time as we have been facing tough times in, in the Finnish economy. So it, of course, it it's causes some problems. But the big question for me is the future uh, labor market in the term of, of in, in, in terms of structures, professional structures. Do we have in the future, in 20, 30 years time, still that kind of jobs that, that people are, are able to get without much education, without linguistic skills, without knowing the cultural practices? The tendency, looks, the trend seems that they are diminishing all the time and it means all the time also more challenges in the integration processes. Okay, thank you all for sharing your insights. Okay, very quick. No, that, that you don't misunderstand me. When, when I'm talking about the kind of new vision of society, of course, there is a basis, yeah. In, in the German case, that's our basic law, yeah. That is to accept, yeah. So we don't want parallel kind of judges as you find in certain parts of Berlin, for example, yeah. So in this sense, never ever Uh, yeah, so that, uh, I just okay. wanted to add Thank this. You. Uh, uh, nyt sitten päivän tulee vetää yhteen vielä kansanedustaja Tytti Tuppurainen. Hän on uh, muun muassa jäsen uh, suuressa valikunnassa ja uh, 
eurooppalaisen demaripuolueen presidio, presi, presidentsi jäsen. Ole hyvä. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, thank you for your kind invitation to address this conference uh, with concluding remarks. I think it's quite impossible to summarize everything that has been said, especially that we are so desperately behind the schedule. But please allow me a few uh, perspectives on the issue. It is clear that Europe is facing the biggest refugee crisis since the Second World War. More than half of those who have reached the Europe this year were from Syria, the Horn of Africa and Afghanistan. These are countries and regions torn apart by war, oppression, persecution, instability, poverty or religious extremism. And in case of Syria, Afghanistan and Libya, all of these things. In order to find a comprehensive solutions for refugee crisis, we should primarily address its causes, as it has been said, including war, poverty and a sharp rise in inequality. Europe has a significant role to play in its neighbourhood. A strong cooperation with key partners in the region, such as Arab League and the African Union, will be key to developing a holistic strategy to deal with the multi-faced challenges triggering these massive micro-rity uh, flows. This is clearly a crisis for Europe, a crisis of solidarity and lack of burden sharing. But above all, it is a humanitarian emergency with those arriving seeking peace, stability, security and help from us, a vast majority of them being women and, and children. Hyvät ystävät, vielä yksi vertaus tästä mittakaavasta. Olemme kuulleet, että joukot, joita Suomeen tulee ovat, ää, ja Eurooppaan tulee, ovat oikeiston mielestä hallitsemattoman suuria. Mutta jos ajattelemme, että EUn alueella on puoli miljardia asukasta, 500 miljoonaa ihmistä, ja toistaiseksi tänne on saapunut noin 800 000 pakolaista, Tätä taustaa vasten kovasti allekirjoittaisin liittokansleri Merkelin sanoman vie schaffen das. Tätä lukemaa voi verrata myös Yhdysvaltain muuttoliikkeen huippuvuoteen 1907. Tuolloin Yhdysvaltain mantereille saapui miljoona 300 000 siirtolaista ja tuolloin tuon maan oma väestö oli saman verran kuin Saksassa tällä hetkellä, eli noin 80 miljoonaa. Mutta muuttoliike eittämättä tästä vielä jatkuu. And now into English again. Instead of building walls, we need to provide safe and legal avenues in re to reach European soil. For us as a social democratic movement, this means humanitarian corridors, by strengthening the provision of humanitarian visas in the visa code. It means family reunification, private sponsorship schemes, flexible visa arrangements and a permanent EU-wide system of resettlement. We must speed up the discussion on a binding permanent resettlement and relocation mechanism within the European Union. This is also in the interest of fin Finland. Tällä hetkellä keskustelu turvapaikkakriisistä ja maahanmuutosta keskittyy hyvin paljon rajoituksiin, EUn ulkorajojen vartiointiin ja siihen, millaisia rekisteröintikeskuksia pystytämme niin Euroopan ulkorajoille, hotspotteihin kuin tänne Suomeen ja lähialueillemme. Se on epäilemättä tärkeää ja olemme Suomena mukana esimerkiksi Frontexin voimavarojen vahvistamisessa. Mutta meidän tehtävämme sosiaalimokraattisena liikkeenä on nyt kääntää huomiota ja keskustelua voimakkaasti kotoutumiseen ja integraatioon. Jo tällä hetkellä esimerkiksi Suomessa on noin 20 000 
turvapaikan hakijaa, joiden tarpeet eivät voi odottaa. Aivan kuten täällä Nasima Rasmier sanoi, kielikoulutus, kotoutuminen, vuoropuhelu suomalaisten kanssa, se täytyy aloittaa välittömästi, jotta hätämajoitus yksiköistä ja vastaanottokeskuksista ei muodostu varastoja saati henkisiä vankiloita. As social democrats, we must put the battle for the respect of human dignity and fundamental rights at the top of our agenda. Through the proposal of effective integration policies, which provide access to basic rights, such as education, healthcare, social housing, access to the labor market, and guarantees for a decent standard of living. Ja viitaten täällä esitettyyn kysymykseen kuripolitiikasta, on varmasti niin, että tämä muuttoliike antaa mahdollisuuden myös elvyttävään politiikkaan niihin julkisiin investointeihin, joita eurooppalaisessa talouspoliittisessa keskustelussa on kovasti kaivattu. Lopultakin viitaten näihin todella traagisiin tapahtumiin Pariisissa, on syytä noterata, että poliittinen oikeisto käyttää näitä tekoja hyväksi luodessaan vastakkainasettelua ja leimaamista, mustamaalaamista turvapaikanhakijoiden suhteen. On erittäin tärkeää, että erotamme nämä rasistiset ja puheet ja muuttoliikkeen toisistaan ja kytkemme irti käynnissä olevan terrorismin vastaisen taistelun ja muuttoliikkeen. Näin otti kantaa Euroopan sosiaalidemokraattisen puolueen puheenjohtajisto viime torstaina Brysselissä ja näin on myös Suomen maamme hallitus ja suuri valiokunta linjannut perjantaina antaessaan ministeri Orpolle ohjeita tulevaan sisäministerikokoukseen. Ei tule antaa yhtään retorisesti periksi, ei yhtään periksi rasismille eikä tule väistyä poliittisen oikeiston edessä, kun he tätä vastakkainasettelua ja leimaamista rakentavat. Voi olla, että myös meidän tulisi entistä johdonmukaisemmin puhua ISIS-liikkeestä sen kansainvälisellä nimityksellä DASH, jotta emme tulisi piilotajuisesti aina veitata semme tähän terroristijärjestöön leimanneeksi myös uskontoa islamia. ISIS on Islamic State, islamilainen valtio, ja joka kerta, kun sen lausumme, helposti luomme ennakkoluuloja islamin uskoa kohtaan. On todella tärkeää sanoa ääneen vahvasti, että maltillinen islamilainen yhteisö on aivan yhtä järkyttynyt näistä terroriteoista kuin mitä me kaikki täällä esimerkiksi Suomessa tai Euroopassa. Sen sijaan, että kääntäisimme selkämme islamilaiselle yhteisölle, meidän tulee rakentaa vuoropuhelua islamilaisen yhteisön kanssa sen sijaan, että leimaisimme ja, ja loisimme erilaisia pelkoja ikään kuin islamin uskosta terrorismi alkulähteenä. Meidän tulee vahvistaa maltillista islamia yhteisöissämme aivan täällä Suomessa ja koko Euroopan tasolla. Ja lopuksi puheenjohtaja, to conclude. Our European social democratic family, we should lead the debate on the future of Europe. A Europe where refugees are treated in a human way, with dignity and respect of their fundamental rights. We are the founders of the European idea and need to protect its values and the legal norms in which they have been enshrined. The far and the populist right in Europe has no solution other than the promotion of fear and xenophobic language. Their narrative of fear does not correspond to our values. Ladies and gentlemen, it's compassion, understanding and practical solutions which are the only way forward. Kiitoksia. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Th thank you, Tutti. Thank you, our speakers and our great audience. You know, Finland is a Lutheran country. You have to work hard in order to get your recreation time.
but now it's recreation time. There will be some drinks in the lobby, and the chairman of our uh, of our board, Party Secretary Rayo Panana, will raise a glass for our foundation. Please have some uh, refreshments in the lobby.